Hello, and welcome to, or welcome back to, Project Apollo, my series on a cattle seed world. Seed worlds are speculative evolution projects where a planet is seeded with Earth life, which is then left to evolve and diversify in this new context. On planet Apollo, these life forms were cattle, which, along with some plants and invertebrates, were left to fill every niche on the planet. A few million years later, many cattle have taken up new niches and food sources, such as several groups of carnivorous cattle. However, herbivores are still thriving, and have made adaptations of their own. While some grew small or fast to outcompete the rivals, several groups might have adapted for size, growing into truly massive megafauna. Before we continue, I'd appreciate if you took a second to check your subscribed. Even if you think you already are, it would mean so much if you took a second to be sure. And it turns out, YouTube does unsubscribe you. While you're there, smash that like button and leave a comment. Also, I asked the comments in the last video to name the two species of arthropods mentioned. I'll be calling the giant spider Arctosa titan, referring to the genus of burrowing wolf spiders Arctosa. I also like the names Megarachne and Gigantarachne, simply meaning big spider. The family of swarming, locust-like grasshoppers, will be called Neo-Titanoptera, Neo meaning new, and Titanoptera being an extinct group of grasshopper-like predators. Anyway, thank you for all your amazing suggestions, and let's get back to the video. How big could a land mammal get? Size is not some type of goal or endpoint of evolution, but rather it's more about what advantages size can provide. So why might cows evolve to get larger, and what might that look like? Also, it might be worth noting that cattle are already sometimes considered megafauna. The term doesn't seem to have any one definition, as far as I can find at least. Anyway, when cattle were initially brought to planet Apollo, the populations exploded. Unchecked by predators, the herd soon grew so big that there wasn't enough grass to go around on even a planet-wide prairie. Thus, some cattle diversified into other diets, experimenting with insectivory or carnivory. But the majority of cattle still had to outcompete the rest of the herds and claim as much grass as possible for themselves. While many cattle avoided this problem altogether by growing smaller to require less food, some cattle went the opposite direction and grew massive, large enough to bully rivals out of grazing land. A million years later, new species arrived on the scene, upending the balance. Carnivorous cattle ravaged the herds, finally providing some relief from the overcrowding. Of course, this relief came with the price of potentially being eaten. Survival strategies had to be evolved. Herding is an obvious one. Smaller species can outmaneuver carnivores or hide in burrows, and many cattle adapted to outrun their predators, but the largest cattle could survive by merit of simply being too large to kill. Carnivores could steal calves, but that's still a massive risk when it's angry, five-ton mother might charge in and punch you 20 feet. Perhaps the earliest megafaunal cattle species were large, low-to-the-ground animals adapted for eating massive amounts of grass and being too large for predators, resembling a rhinoceros. With this size, they could have a planet-wide range, able to migrate freely around Apollo. This massive territory might allow these cows to weigh in at several tons, and grow taller than any cattle breeds on Earth. The earliest carnivores on Apollo hunt mostly using their horns, so these cattle might develop developed thick hides to serve as armor against stabs. Their horns could grow wide and splayed to create space around the animal, or point forward like a rhino for use in charging and combat. Apollo is a planet of grass, essentially a massive prairie, but it probably wouldn't remain that way forever. Perhaps many plant species develop wooden stems for protection against grazers, and maybe some of these species evolve height thanks to this structural stability. For a while, herbaceous plants, or plants with flexible green stems, could be the tallest, perhaps reaching several meters in height. But as woody plants grow taller, they'd be supplanted. Some scientists believe trees evolved independently on Earth dozens of times, and species of similar height would likely appear on Apollo. Apollo has no geographical barriers to prevent one lineage from quickly dominating the planet, but there could easily still be several groups of tall, tree-like plants developing independently. In a few million years, plant diversity in Apollo might skyrocket. As trees evolve, there will doubtless be cattle evolving to browse the tops of trees, or knock them down entirely. While some cattle might evolve graceful, giraffe-like forms, one group might evolve truly massive bodies for feeding. Apollo's oceans are essentially just massive lakes, which means there are no geographical barriers to the cattle's range. Perhaps with a planet-wide food supply, they could be even bigger than elephants, or even the mighty Paraceratherium, the largest known mammal in Earth history. This height and weight would require huge changes to their bodies, with thick bones and column-like legs. Pregnancy would be long and difficult, perhaps lasting for years. But at such sizes, these cattle would be resistant to even the largest predators and have access to food sources no one else has, making it worth the risk. Speaking of predators, there'd likely be some carnivores adapted to hunt megafauna. 
While carnivores are generally far smaller than herbivores, some groups might evolve large bodies for catching large prey, although the largest megafauna would probably be safe as adults. Asterionoides charging is powerful, and probably only effective at large sizes, but charging could become dangerous for Asterionoides itself once it becomes too large, and ambush hunting would become hard if it's too easy to spot. Perhaps the largest carnivores on Apollo would be a lineage of Minophilus, with massive heads and muscular bodies for hunting cattle across the planet. At such sizes, almost nothing would be safe from this apex predator. Thanks for watching! A channel called House Wheat Studios made some awesome videos on the first three episodes of this series, so check them out if you want more speculation on Planet Apollo. Like I said near the start of the video, megafauna are not an inevitable endpoint of evolution, but they do seem to be a constant in many environments. I'm also not sure if predation would be as big of a driver towards megafauna as I implied. The next episode in this series is on small cattle, which I don't think there's any catchy term for. I can imagine tiny cattle burrowing underground, or becoming arboreal, but I'd appreciate any suggestions in the comments or thoughts on this video. Leave a like and subscribe if you've watched this far, and consider checking out my Patreon. I don't have any exclusive paid content on there at the moment, but it's a great way to support the channel. I'd appreciate any support on there if you're in a position to do so, although watching these videos is certainly enough. You can find a link to that in the description. Anyway, thanks for watching, have a great day, and I'll see you next time.